I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the references and so forth that were um, used in doing this series of videos. And uh, the veterans of uh, Panama Canal Zone section of the Military Veterans Advocacy has uh, collected and done a lot of research um, on uh, exactly what went on in the canal zone. And this series builds on that information. And uh, it's also uh, based on people who were in the canal zone and places they saw that uh, they, they believe or have reason to believe uh, there were herbicides and pesticides that were applied and used in the area. Um, and I have mentioned some of the, the references, some of the source materials and references can going through here. But the purpose of these videos is not to uh, give an in-depth explanation of those. And uh, in fact, some of the people who are viewing the videos have seen these references mentioned many times and um, therefore there's no need to repeat that here because there are other uh, places that you can get that information which I'll show you in going through here. Um, I would like to talk though about uh, some of the things that I did use and if we look at, um, look at our materials, uh, and these aren't in any particular order, but what I'd like to show you first is uh, what inspired me. And that is uh, a paper that was uh, published by uh, Dr. Kenneth R. Olson and Donna Tourneau. And this was uh, published in September 20 of 21 and was peer reviewed. And it was long-term envir environmental impacts of pesticide and herbicide use in the Panama Canal Zone. And in going through the, the document and so forth, um, it clearly lays out the long-term impact that uh, some of the uh, chemicals that were used down there. And when I say chemicals, I mean herbicides and pesticides. And uh, one of the conclusions of the paper was that uh, uh, there was a need for testing. And in going through the materials that exist and so forth, there have been uh, different places where people have said they've done testing and so forth. Uh, in fact, I referred to some of those uh, in going through. For example, um, there's one that has to do with the uh, pesticide monitoring. And we talked about that some in the series, but uh, one of the conclusions that was reached in this uh, monitoring study was that uh, the current testing needed to have a plan and needed to be consistent. And, you know, it, it pointed out that uh, the samples taken and so forth were, were minimal in many cases, but they felt they could make uh, some generalizations from it. Um, we also saw uh, in some newspaper articles that I referenced, uh, that um, the there were were studies done by uh, that they referenced by Panama, uh, and they mentioned that they were done in before turnover in 1997, and on two of the uh, posts that were still active at that time. Uh, 
which post is not mentioned nor where the samples were taken. Um, going back to our pesticide study, it mentioned that um, uh, it, one of the things it tested for was uh, 2,4-D and 2,4-5-T. However, we don't know exactly where those were tested. And we also know that the study uh, cast some doubt on the way the testing was done. So uh, seeing the paper inspired me to want to work on this project and to bring to bear the information and so forth and the research that's been done by veterans of Panama Canal Zone and also um, input from the people who were down there, who spent time down there, who saw what was going on and so forth. And that's what this series is. It's a bringing together of the information and people who were there. Now, I do have other references that I use because I wanted to add a little bit of history to the different places I talked about and so forth to give a little perspective. And um, I also uh, went out and I did find some uh, different um, photos and so forth to add and uh, uh, also maps. Uh, we do have uh, a map, a uh, set of maps actually for the Tropical Test Center, which is part of the uh, information that uh, the veterans of Panama Canal Zone have. But I, I went out and looked like for snippets of uh, maps of the Canal Zone and maps of different posts. And uh, uh, let me now talk a little bit about the tolls, as you uh, are probably aware. Uh, the main tool that I use for the, the presentation, and I showed current views and so forth, is uh, the web version of uh, Google Earth. And um, it, within that, I built definitions for the different places that we uh, uh, that we wanted to look at, that we were pinning, if you will. And um, I, in researching the areas and trying to figure out, can I pin a reported place or where best to pin it? I use Google Earth Pro, which is a desktop um, a version of Google, Google Earth Web. Uh, but the difference is, difference is that uh, Google Earth Pro has some functions that aren't present on the web. And one of those is that uh, you can go back and look at the historical views that are available for a particular area. So I was able to go through and see, you know, was there construction? Did something cover up this area? Uh, was something done to it? Um, I referenced in the series places where it appears that dirt was spread from building the new locks. Um, I was able to see the locks being built and I was able to see dirt appearing in, a, in particular areas. Um, the other function that is present in the uh, Google Earth Pro is that it's possible to measure um, between different landmarks and so forth. And uh, so that's why I use that. Um, and I'd like to encourage you that uh, if you want to know more about uh, some of the references and, and documents that I've mentioned, uh, there's two primary places to go. And one of those is the Military Veterans Advocacy and their website, uh, which is militaryveteransadvocacy.org. And the second place is the Veterans of Panama Canal Zone, which is a section, as I mentioned, of the Military Veterans Advocacy. 
And I would also encourage you to consider um, looking at closely at uh, the MVA, Military Veterans Advocacy Site. And while you're there, uh, consider possibly joining and helping out. Uh, look at what's been done. Uh, there have been successes achieved. Uh, there was a rulemaking request uh, that was uh, accepted or, or approved by the uh, Secretary of uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs. And that was pushed by uh, the MVA. And the second thing is that uh, there was a HR 526, 5026 bill, which was uh, introduced in the, uh, in the House, and it would uh, extend the presumption of uh, exposure for certain conditions such as exist in other areas of the world at this time. So these are things that uh, the research and documentation is collected by this section and the support and, um, and push by the MBA have, have accomplished. And there's more to come. And I would also like to thank Donna Tourneau, who's the uh, director for Veterans of Panama Canal Zone, for contributing her very valuable time. She's very, very busy to the video production of this series. Once again, I want to thank veteran Richard Wyman for putting together all this information for your use in fighting your claims. I do want to announce that I have stepped down as director at the Military Veterans Advocacy for the Panama section. I think there's someone better than I to serve uh, in the role uh, going forward. While I was there, I was able to bring my research forward and help get a bill introduced for Panama, HR 5026, as well as a rulemaking request uh, granted by the VA Secretary. There's still more work to do, and we do need Congress's help. So everyone, uh, try to help if you can. Uh, contact your representatives and get them to support the Panama bill that will be coming out again next Congress. Thanks a lot for listening.